their public pools. Scott Laurie reports. It's a common summer ritual, chilling out by the pool. But for some, it also means sitting under the sun, frying by the pool. Tanning will always remain, but I think it's, it's being intelligent about it that's the, that's the new way of, of doing things, especially in the sunshine. So, you know, I put the cream and go back in after a few minutes. La Salle, Verdun, Ville-Saint-Pierre and Lachine are trying to be intelligent about the sun. So they've bought 60 umbrellas to put around their pools. The idea comes from this dermatologist. It started when he wrote a letter to his mayor. It was a warning the city took seriously. It doesn't make any sense. The people, when they get out of the water, there's no protection. So, and it, it became, uh, you know, logical and obvious that we had to do something for that. So this man says his neighborhood pool in La Salle is unprotected and needed umbrellas. I don't put the, the, that screen, and that's why I'm, I'm burning like that. Uh, that's why I'm put on the, the, the parasol and uh, the mayor uh, logic. That's a good idea to put uh, this. The Canadian Dermatology Association says 60,000 Canadians will get some form of skin cancer this year. More than 600 people will die from melanoma. There is about an increase of 15 to 20 percent of uh, skin cancers in Quebec every year for the last 10 years. So. When you look at these uh, statistics, uh, you have no choice. The umbrellas are nothing new to lifeguards who've had them for three years. They say it's lowered the number of sunburns they get. Often they forget about us sometimes, but we're out here six to eight hours uh, a day. So really, to get these, it was just amazing. So far, only four cities on the island of Montreal provide shelters at public pools. It's an idea dermatologists hope will spread to other municipalities. Scott Laurie, CBC News, La Salle. It's not only sunny and hot out there, Montreal is also going through a bit of a dry spell. It's been more than two weeks, or about two weeks, since we got any real rain. That's not a record, mind you. Longest drought in 1947 lasted 21 days. But the dry spell is causing some concern. Heather Hiscox reports. A quick glance through the crowd of the old port, and it's easy to pick out the accessory of choice. A bottle of water. BYOB, or buy one at the snack bar. Oh, it's going crazy right now. I mean, uh, this weekend, uh, over 200 cases of uh, bottled water. These days, a bottle is just about the only place you'll find water. It certainly isn't falling from the sky. We're on our 14, 14 continuous day now without any rain. And by the time this dry spell ends, that number will probably hit 17. Forecasters don't expect a drop of rain until Thursday at the earliest. Outside the city, that's starting to make farmers nervous. On this vegetable farm in Napierville, the soil is parched and cracked. The first corn is smaller than normal, so is the lettuce. In fact, a lot of this crop is too small to sell. Yeah, the loss uh, can't uh, about uh, 30, uh, 30 percent, yeah. Most farmers, like Jean-Bernard Van Winden, have irrigation systems, but it's impossible to water such huge acreage all at once. Yes, there, there will no rain this week. This will be more catastrophic. Catastrophic? No. Disappointing? Very. For many people camping in provincial parks, the fire index is extremely high and campfires are forbidden. It would have helped for the mosquitoes to uh, get rid of them a little bit. Uh, we had to spend our time on the beach. More than 50 forest fires are burning now in northern Quebec. Their smoke drifted all the way to Montreal and cast a haze over the city today. But thanks to a brisk northeast wind, there were no problems with air quality. And so far, the heat hasn't caused many serious medical problems either. Doctors do advise a simple remedy to beat the heat. I think the most important thing is, is just to, to drink water and, and to, to consciously make an effort to do that. Jean-Bernard Van Winden would love to give his lettuce a drink of water, but he'll have to wait. He's a farmer, he says. He's used to dealing with whatever Mother Nature dishes out. Heather Hiscox, CBC News, Montreal. Coming up on Newswatch, roses used to be hard to grow. The slightest frost could kill them. Now new hardy Canadian roses called Explorer, with names like Frontenac, Champlain and Hudson. Coming up. With Bell on Distance, how much is a five-minute call from Montreal to New York? Around... Eight dollars. Um, three dollars. Five dollars. Eleven dollars. Guess again. Five minutes of Bell on Distance on Sundays is only a dollar sixty-six. Oh.
That's all? Yeah. And with the Real Plus Savings Plan, it costs even less. Call us at 1-800-668-BELL. Bell, it costs less than you think. I only had a few drinks. Next thing I could remember was me waking up in a police car. Extreme Attitudes Against Drunk Driving is brought to you by CBC Montreal, Salon Selectives, and these organizations. It's the CBC6 Fireworks Contest. Win one of nine trips for two courtesy of Air Canada. Fill out the contest coupon in Saturday's La Presse and remember this country, France. Enter this week. At Park Safari, there's so much to do. Amusement rides. <coughs> Not for you, you're a little big. Exciting shows. Bananas are on the fridge. And you can take such a bath at the Magic Creek. <coughs> Chill, Leo, I'm getting to it. Most of all, there are animals. This summer at Park Safari, 75 different animal species to discover, and it's only 35 minutes from Montreal. From the other side of the planet, the world of animals is yours at Park Safari. Hey, you don't believe me? <coughs> Ask him. The president of Egypt, Hosni Mubarak, escaped with his life this morning, but it was a close call as gunmen tried to assassinate Mubarak in the streets of Addis Ababa. Mubarak was on his way to an African summit in Ethiopia, but he flew right back to Cairo after the shootout, a shootout that left two of his bodyguards and two attackers dead. David Gray reports. The Egyptian president returned to Cairo's airport just hours after narrowly escaping an assassination attempt in Ethiopia. He was greeted by a full reception of top army officers and cabinet ministers. At a news conference at the airport shortly afterward, President Mubarak described what happened. Suddenly I found the blue van blocking the road and somebody just flat on the ground. And machine gun stuff. For me it was shocking, what's that? Then I realized that there are bullets coming to an hour car. It is an armored car. So I was not afraid at all that anything could come in. One bullet came in the glass, but no effect at all. The attack came just outside a Palestinian mission in Addis Ababa. The Egyptian president says there were five or six gunmen. Bullets hit the windows of his armored car, but he wasn't hurt. His bodyguards killed three of the attackers. The president was on his way to a meeting of the Organization of African Unity. Mubarak has ruled Egypt since the assassination of Anwar Sadat in 1981, shot dead at a reviewing stand by extremists belonging to Islamic Jihad. Mubarak was at Sadat's side when the former president was killed. This is the fourth known attempt on his life, and the closest attackers have come to reaching him. The president has now called for an all-out war on terrorism. David Gray, CBC News, Cairo. Quebec's public security minister, Serge Menard, says the Quebec government will not allow Mohawk to build a casino in Ghanazadage. But those in favor of the new casino say they don't need Quebec's approval. They say they'll ask the federal government for permission instead. Mohawk will also have a few more days to vote for or against the casino in the referendum. Voting has been extended a few days. Results should be known by next Friday. In other news, a firefighter is recovering from an accident earlier today. He was helping city workers change light bulbs in a park in Montreal North. He was standing on the small platform at the back of a fire truck when it backed up unexpectedly. He was crushed between a fence and spectator stand. There was an explosion at the Torpedo Bar on Jean Talon Street this morning. The bar was closed at the time. Nobody was hurt. Firefighters got the fire after under control pretty quickly. A witness saw a man running away from the bar at the time of the explosion. The arson squad is investigating.
A 14-inch water main burst in Ville La Salle this morning. The pipe broke around 5 o'clock and created havoc during the rush hour this morning. But by 9 o'clock, traffic was pretty much back to normal. The water also caused a chunk of the road to collapse. City workers are still trying to figure out how this happened. Roses. Roses are probably the most popular flowers in the world, a symbol of love and romance. Mind you, here in Canada, they've always been pretty hard to grow with the cold climate and all. So a group of researchers developed a new species of roses, roses that resist cold weather. Now, though, Agriculture Canada is about to close down the farm that developed these roses. Ray Fischel reports. A rose is a rose is a rose, said Gertrude Stein. But in Canada, these roses are special. Explorer roses are cold resistant. They can survive some of the toughest winters Canada has. Some of them, certainly the uh, Rugosa types like Jan's Monk, can be grown up, up to the Northwest Territories and James Bay. Just how important is it having hardy roses? Well, here in my rose garden, I have hybrid teas, which will not survive the rigors of a Canadian winter. So I have to protect them. I take one of these things, a rose cone, and after mounding soil at the base of each bush, I fill this with shredded leaves, and I put one of these on top of every bush. That's a lot of work, and even then I lose some roses every year. That's why Agriculture Canada invented the Explorer roses. The only protection they need is snow cover. The president of the Quebec Rose Society has Explorer roses at the front of her garden. Because I want people to grow them, and they're easy to grow. There's no maintenance, they're disease-free and um, they're just a lovely rose. 18 varieties of Explorer roses have been developed at Agriculture Canada's experimental farm, but the farm's about to close. That I was completely devastated by the closure of this place. It's been my life's work and my, worst, my life's love in here, and uh, all of a sudden they come along and just close the whole uh, program down. Just 14 months ago, Ottawa spent millions here to grow roses indoors. Computers control the watering and feeding systems, as well as the lights needed to grow seedlings indoors. The greenhouse is of little use, except for horticultural research. Why did they spend all that money? Why did they tear down a viable farmhouse where they had been for years, put up this ultra-modern, absolutely gorgeous facility, and then shut it down a year later? It doesn't make sense. Agriculture Canada is closing the rose farm for budget reasons, but the same department never really made any serious attempts at marketing Explorer roses. In the past, most of the older explorers were let out to the nursery trade. There were a lot of nurseries in, here and in the U.S. and Holland and other European countries that were growing them and not paying anything at all. Now, when many Canadians buy Explorer roses, People get them from American suppliers. The Americans, as always, get right in there when it comes to roses, and, and they started growing them. And uh, so when now, when we want to buy roses, where do we get them from? Grown in the United States. Roses that were invented in Canada. Right here in Canada. Canadians have got to start believing in the, their own selves. We've got some of the finest research in the world being done right here in Canada and Quebec. No one knows what will happen to this rose research station next spring or to the half dozen new rose varieties that were about to be launched. Ray Fichot, CBC News, L'Assomption. Well, if you have roses, you'd better be watering them regularly in this weather. Patrick DeVelfa is sitting in for Jamie Orchard today. He has the forecast. Is beautiful weather with us? Beautiful hot and dry with us for the next week or so? Yes, we cannot expect rain from the skies anytime soon. Maybe Thursday, there's likely more, a uh, bigger chance for Friday. Let's take a look at the big picture. As yesterday, this cold front swept southern Quebec. There was a few thunderstorms that developed, but nothing serious behind it drier air and cooler air will still be a little above seasonal temperature but it's much more bearable than what we had over the weekend see the system this is what we're expecting for late in the week right now the system is caught in an upper level trough so it's moving very slowly but as it gets close to Quebec we'll see showers and thunderstorm for uh, a bit to be to be coming probably already by late Wednesday or Thursday for Montreal mostly Friday Let's take a look at our forecast, if you will. Uh, we'll see the temperature overnight that will get closer to the uh, seasonal values, around 15 degrees for Montreal, 12 for the Laurentian, 
the skies will be clear because of still, we're still under the influence of uh, this ridge of high pressure. Like I said, it's going to be with us for many more days. Let's take a look at tomorrow. Lots of sun, maybe a few clouds, nothing serious. Temperature a little above seasonal. Seasonal in Montreal right now is 25 degrees. We have 27, 24 for the Laurentian. Long-term forecast, well, as the system gets a little closer to us, we'll still have a nice Wednesday. Temperature close to seasonal values with 26 degrees. Thursday, this is where we could start to be under the influence of the system coming from out west. Maybe showers, maybe thunderstorm late in the day, but for Friday, a lot more chance of showers and thunderstorm as the system really reaches over Quebec. And the temperature, like I said, will be close to seasonal. Tomorrow for Eastern Township, just like for the rest of the province, lots of sun, temperature close to seasonal values for the southern part of Quebec, while for the eastern part of Quebec, we have temperature a little below, maybe a degree or two below seasonal values. We had a lot of wind there today, just like for southern Quebec tomorrow, the wind will die as the ridge moves a little eastward. Notice the temperature, a little cooler for the uh, uh, St. Lawrence Gulf with temperatures ranging from 16 to the Magdalene Island all the way to 20.